Hi everyone. So here is the unwrapping of a, of a really large fossil block uh, which has arrived for preparation and it contains the skull and partial skeleton of a really interesting carnivore which dates back 30 million years. I'll talk a little bit more about what it is shortly. Um, as you can see, there's bone exposed at the top of this, uh, of this block, uh, which was how it was first discovered. And then uh, there's been a little bit of roughing out, a little bit of preparation to expose the rest of the skull for identification purposes. The block itself is pretty sturdy. In fact, no field jacket was really needed beyond the tape that's around it because it was such a large and, uh, and, and sturdy block to take out. Whenever you transport these blocks, however, uh, it's only natural that some cracks, natural cracks in the block can open up. So one of the first jobs, although admittedly I didn't record it here, is to use a bit of field consolidant, some really strong glue called cyanoacrylate um, that you pour into each of the uh, little cracks around the blocks to strengthen them and make sure that you've got a really, really solid block to start with. Once you've got that uh, base block then uh, strengthened, it's all about the preparation. Um, and as you can see here, I'm starting on the skull um, of this carnivore. The tool that I'm primarily using to take off the, the, the bulk of the matrix um, is the Paleo Tool ME9100. Uh, again, the details are always in the description if anyone's interested in finding out a little bit more about the tool. It's a pneumatic air tool, uh, which I'm working on an air compressor at about 80 PSI. And it really does uh, carve through this matrix really, really well. As with all preparation, the key to success on making a great prep um, is really about patience and taking it as slow as possible. Obviously, this is done in time lapse, so it doesn't look as though I'm very going very slowly, but these things take uh, hours and hours, tens of hours to prep. Uh, the, the idea with these air tools, these are vibrating air tools uh, with an air compressor. And what you want to do is get close as you can to the bone, but never to touch the bone. What you're trying to find is the interface between the bone itself and the exterior, exterior matrix. There's usually a, an interface, and if you vibrate close enough to it, it will come off. When fossils are described as sticky or the matrix is sticky, that usually means that the interface isn't that clear and makes fossil preparation uh, really difficult. But in this case, um, this was much more of a dream prep. In this part of the prep, you'll see me starting to expose some of the, uh, the neck vertebrae, so the atlas and the axis, and then some of the cervical verts which are coming out throughout the back of the skull. This looked, uh, as I was prepping it, as though this was going to be a pretty fully articulated uh, skeleton. However, it starts uh, becoming less articulated. Uh, there are two forelimbs uh, in this block. Um, there are many cervical neck verts, um, some ribs, uh, and a few other um, and a few other bones. But really, it becomes quite scattered as it gets further into the block. So I could probably only describe this as a very partial skeleton um, of this creature. So let me explain a little bit more about what this fossil is. So this is a mammal, it's a carnivorous mammal, which dates back 30 million years to the uh, Ligocene. And it was found in, in South Dakota in the Brawl Formation. Now this uh, carnivore is known as Daphinus superbus, and it was about the size of, uh, of a wolf when it lived. And it comes from an extinct genus of, uh, of carnivores called bear dogs or Amphicyon. From an evolutionary standpoint, these bear dogs were actually pretty successful. They lived from around 42 million years ago in the Middle Eocene, all the way till quite recently, only three million years ago. And the bear dogs were called bear dogs because effectively they were uh, primitive dogs in terms of uh, their body proportions. But actually they were much heavier in build and they had a locomotion which was referred to as plantigrade, which means that they had their toes and their metatarsals all flat on the ground, so effectively flat-footed like a bear. So they shared similar qualities to both bears and dogs, but they were, they were neither. They were bear dogs and that's why they uh, colloquially referred to that. So I'm going to leave you at this point to watch out the rest of this time-lapse video. I reckon in total this probably took me about 20 hours uh, to do and obviously this is only condensed down into about a five minute video. So I hope you like it and I hope you like the end result. I was really pleased with, uh, with how this one came out. And thanks for watching. If you want to see more of these, I'm going to try and put one of these up every other week. Um, so thanks again. <laughs>